your best players are gone. And they are now known as Brighton Rejects. Chelsea's <laughs> new nickname is Brighton Rejects. <laughs> Please, make that last a whole season. Please. I want Chelsea I'll, to be known be as the wonderful. Brighton Rejects forever. What? Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Yahoo Footballing Weekly with me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. And me, Yahoo editor Chehan Kong. And we have nobody with us it's right just now. The two of us, just two the two of us. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. Just the two of us today yeah. because we have a special guest coming in part two. Let's give the teaser away now. National 100 metre sprint record holder UK Shum will be joining us in part two to talk all things Singapore football and Singapore sports. So stay with us for that. Stay with us. We've got a special offer first. Yeah, correct. So, you know, uh, sponsored by StarHub again and StarHub has that Pioneer Generation uh, package where uh, deal where, you know, if you are in the Pioneer Generation, you get this and you want to subscribe for the Premier Plus package to watch the next season of the EPL. It's half price for you. $12.61 instead of $25.22. Fantastic. Fantastic. But you got to do it right now. It ends on 31st of August. Right it's, now. Right now. Like in 15 minutes after the podcast. All right. But then you do it. It's a great yeah. deal though. Seriously. Great deal. Half deal. price. Great deal. Yeah. Sign up for your StarHub special offer right now. All right. English Premier League. That's yeah. what StarHub show. That's what Week we're talking two. about now. Week, Week two. two. Fabulous. Yeah. That's some surprises. I think surprises. We'll I've got one thing to say. West, West Ham, Ham United yeah. three, Chelsea one. I don't know how they did it. I, I was, went. I went to bed at yeah, half time. I went, me too. I went to bed at half time. Like ah, there's Chelsea are gonna come back and yeah. kick them. I was <laughs> in this WhatsApp group with my dad and my brothers, West Ham fans. And half time, I swear my father was calling for Moise's head. <laughs> That's it. I've had enough. It's too defensive. Long balls to Antonio. Yeah. As I wrote in my column, available on Yahoo, I like Antonio, but he's not the quickest guy in the world. It was a bit one dimensional. Wake yeah. up, 3 1. 3 1. Like, what the hell happened? And, and obviously, if I, I'm a Liverpool fan, so I've, I look at the forums and everybody is laughing at Moises Casado, who joined them for a record fee, 150 million pounds in state money, though. And then, and then now he concedes, a, he like got eight losses of possession in his substitute role, eight losses of possessions. Um, I think he, and he considered the penalty that led to uh, West Ham's third goal right in stoppage time. So mm. everybody's laughing at him. <laughs> no, it's great. It's funny. It's great. It's funny. But there's a real issue with Chelsea. I, I, th I know it's only two games and we can't get uh, carried away. But as I wrote in the Yahoo column, Chelsea need to spend a little bit more time focusing on balancing their squad yep. rather than balancing their books. I've heard all the economic jargon coming out of the, the Burley oh, camp. Amortisation. Correct. Oh. We sign these young players on long contracts. Eight or nine-year contracts. Depreciating That's... assets so we can write them off and sell the ones we don't want, oh. like Kovacic, on a good profit. What, what, but you can't buy players to please the boardroom. You've got to buy yeah. players to please the manager. The thing, they don't have a striker. Yeah, the thing about stocks or shares are so get amortised. And, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You've got to now they don't have a proper striker. I mean, Nicholas Jackson is young. Yeah. And then from He's only BRL. 21. Very yeah. relatively Raw. inexperienced. Yeah, and then there's no no one else uh, to lead their line. Now, uh, Raheem Sterling was struggling a bit. And it wasn't a, not a, a pale, pale imitation of his former self. And you know, now now you've got Enzo Hernandez in midfield and then you've got Casado coming in. And then you still buy Romeo Lava. Who they didn't Lavia, need. Who really don't need and who Liverpool need and then they, they took it away. So, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> but a, there's a secret yeah. here. They haven't had a proper centre-forward since Diego Costa in 2017, exactly. which and happened to be the same season they won, they won the title. Exactly. So, so work it out. You know, uh, Robin Van Persie wins Man U's last title. You don't mm. win titles without a decent no, striker. Really look not. at Aguero, look at Erling Haaland, Haaland look at yeah. Diago Costa. It goes with Salah. It's common sense. Yeah. Yes, you're yeah. front. You had to get Liverpool. <laughs> Like, it, it, it's, it's 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 buy the players you need, not the players you want or the players yeah. you want to bulk up your squad. And actually, they do have a sort of uh, Romelu Lukaku. But he hasn't even got a squad number. Yeah, no squad number. His 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 loan deal to from from Inter Milan is over. He's actually now back to being a Chelsea player. Yep. And they didn't give him a squad number. They want him gone, preferably to Saudi Arabia for some price, Correct. some high price. But no, Saudi Arabia also not stupid. <laughs> no, like, uh, really, he's thirty years old. Uh, do 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 you really want him? Yeah. But uh, so so you do have you do have a striker, pretty 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 well established striker. Well, look, they had seventeen shots against yeah. uh, West Ham. Uh, he would have put away one of one. them or two yeah. of them with his backside or something. <laughs> you would think, right? Yeah. 
I mean, I never thought I would say this, but Chelsea could actually learn from West Ham, West Ham, about transfer dealings. <laughs> Hear me out, okay. because James Ward-Prowse oh. was a player that West Ham actually needed rather than wanted. Out the way to get it. Set piece specialist. Mm -hmm. Moyes loves his set pieces. Fantastic deliveries. Good crosser, good thrower, and just a very good midfield asset after losing Declan Rice. Sign the players you need, not the players you think you want. Yeah. Learn from West Ham. I never yeah, thought I'd Chelsea, say it. Learn you know, from West Ham. You know, poor, poor Pochettino. You know, it's like now having a team that nobody really mm. likes. Yeah. yeah. Violin? Viol no, no, no. <laughs> we no, don't no, care. No, 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 really care. Speaking yeah. of teams, no, I was going to say yeah, start World War Three. Speaking of teams, we, we, we do like. He doesn't. Manchester United. Yeah. Let's get on to Manchester United. Now, I'm not entirely surprised by the defeat against Tottenham because... I thought they were lucky against Wolves. Yep. And Wolves are not good, as we saw in their second match against the Brighton. Brighton yep. right? They were lucky to beat Wolves. VAR came to the rescue for them there. Against Tottenham, I thought they were bang average. At, I think it might be even worse than the, yeah. the, the Wolves match. I think after, the, after they started off well, got a bit of a couple of attempts, half, half chances. I think they completely ran out of ideas. Just, I think... Before half time even. Hmm. And then and then when, when Spurs caught their first goal, I think that's that's it. They, they didn't they hmm. didn't have any clue of how to come back. And it's like, wow. I mean, for for, for a side which did very well last season, third place, and um this is this is a bit worrying for Eric Ten Hart. A little bit. And hmm. I know I, I said and it went viral that they had the best transfer window. I'm looking a bit ridiculous there, but I still think they bought a good goalkeeper, Mason Mount, relatively risk-free. And the kid up front, Hoyland, he's got a slight injury at the moment mm. and he will come good. But same issue with them as Chelsea. Yeah, striker. The kid's only 21, mm. just like the guy at Chelsea, uh, Nicholas, 21. Yeah. What is it with these elite managers, elite teams, not buying ready-made, finished articles up front? Yeah. I know they're expensive, but if you look at Manchester United right now, God bless Marcus Rashford. I love him. I love everything he does. But he plays best coming in from the left. Everybody knows that. Yep. Except him, apparently. <laughs> he was played through the middle against Tottenham. It didn't work. And then they bring on uh, Garnaccio. Mm. He seems to be... Oh, he starts. He seems to be one of those players who works better as an impact substitute yeah, rather than someone young who starts. Raw. Yeah, 19, you, 20 years old, a bit young. Can't rely on Rashford. Can't rely on Garnaccio. I think they brought Martial on as well. Yeah. Can't rely on him. Roy, Roy Keane was like so livid over Martial. They <laughs> need a striker. Yeah. Man, you need a striker yeah, I mean, they, before the window closes. They have tried to go for Harry Kane for all mm. through the last season and this season. And then suddenly, well... Uh, obviously, Daniel Levy is a hard uh, bargainer, but you know, they they should have kept on with it. I mean, mm. I mean, getting a proven striker. I think what, had they got gotten Harry Kane, maybe he doesn't want to move to Man U. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> so 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 that 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 might make it a bit tougher. But you know, some some caliber a calib a, a striker of the Harry Kane's caliber. Mm. Romelu Lukaku again? <laughs> yeah. Man, you learn from West Ham. <laughs> Sign the players you need. They are becoming the need. Confucius of transfer I, policies. I, I, actually, to be fair, they did. But the, I think Mason Mount and Holland and no, Donna I'm kidding. Are still, good still a bit... Uh, still, still, have, still adjusting to the... the I still think they need a striker. As always, let us know what you think. Does Man U need a striker like Chelsea? Send all of your comments too. Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube. Yahoo SG. Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Now, positive story. Brighton. I love Ooh. Brighton. I love Brighton. I'll say it Top right up table. front. Amazing. Two Ooh. weeks into the season, yep. Brighton are, all, are already the feel-good story of the season for Fantastic. me. Everything they do works. I love the town. I love the community. I love the, the feel of the community club of Brighton. Yeah. Who else? Let me just go through this, right? Who could sell these players? Casado, you mentioned. Sanchez, McAllister, that. Trossard. That's just this season. Mm. Last season, Ben White and uh, Cucurella. Yeah. They sold all of these players for a huge profit and improved the squad. And they finished sixth last season, currently top of the table, Heaven knows what their bank account looks like. <laughs> they play attractive one-touch football. Yeah. They're great to watch. They're a community club, coached well, run well, and great recruitment. Perfect. Yeah. Like Imitoma, the, the Japanese striker. Yeah. First goal was a, like like Maradona dribble yeah. into it and score. It's like, wow. I mean, Brilliant. 
I mean, for 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 these kind of teams, obviously you don't expect them to stay top of the league for the whole season. But you know, it, any team that starts off the the season with a, such a good form means they have been coached well. Yeah. Deserby has, I think, last year he came close to, be, to being named the manager of the year, and this year if he keeps up, keeps up the thing and still gets Brighton into the um, European spots, despite the losses of McAllister and Casado, I think he he'll be a great uh, candidate for being the manager. It's of the a good year. point because if you go by calendar year rather mm. than season, of yeah, year, he is the manager of the year. Mm. Look at this for a stat, right? Since Deserby took over in October. Only Man City and Liverpool have matched Brighton 69 goals in 34 EPL games. That is astonishing. That yeah. is absolutely astonishing. The core of your team is ripped out. Your best players are gone. And they are now known as Brighton Rejects. Yeah. Chelsea's new nickname is Brighton Rejects. <laughs> Please, make that last a whole season. Please. I want Chelsea I'll, to be known be as wonderful. the Brighton Rejects forever. Wonderful. That is your new name. I love it. <laughs> it's the feel-good story for me. Absolutely love it. All right, quick word on Brentford. What do you think? They also look good against uh, Fulham. I, I thought that when they go to Craven Cottage, I, th- I thought they would be, it will be a tough match. But, you know, they played solid defence and then they take their chances very well. Against Spurs last week, I mean, I mean, they also threatened to run over the Spurs, but Spurs managed to hold firm. And they were they weren't very convincing. But, uh, you know, under Thomas Frank, again, this, this shows that, you know, they, they keep on doing well under Thomas Frank mm. over about three seasons, really. Mm. And this, this is also means that the club is being run, managed well. They know what they want, not not like Chelsea, you know, any house spend, but they know the players they need and they fit them in right on the spot. Even even though the Ivan Ivan Tony, yeah, yeah. Ivan Tony is being now being banned because of gambling. Correct. They did hardly miss the beat. We thought they would be struggle without Tony. They still but yeah. It's great to know that West London has one great club and it's Brentford. Oh. It makes me very, very happy to know that. <laughs> Keep going, Brentford. Yeah. All right, it's that time of the show, as always, he's got his red shirt on. So it's now the Liverpool segment with Chia Hun Kiong. <laughs> New signing, my friend. New yeah, signing. What do you Japan think? Captain Wataru Ando. Mm. I mean I mean he it looks like our third choice of a, a central midfielder pair, uh, after we lost. We, we couldn't get Casido and Lavia. But he came on after McAllister was stand, sent off against uh, Bournemouth. I, I thought that for a person who only had one one session, one training session with the team. Almost no sleep. Yeah, no sleep, whatever. He, he, he managed to, you know, very intelligent, make himself available, recycle the ball, play it safe. Exactly what a, a defensive midfielder should be, hmm. and and I think that you know there were, there were Liverpool fans who are very upset about his age. He's thirty years old already, but you know with age comes a bit of uh, um, experience that that comes in running the running the midfield. Look at the alternative, yeah. Chelsea. Look at Casado, Head, headless chickens, headless chickens. Yeah, too young. I mean, it's defensive midfield and goalkeeper are the are the spots. I think. You can man, you can you can afford to have a bit more uh, a bit more older players to to mm. to run the show. You see, I couldn't agree yeah. more. I think that Liverpool might have pulled off one of the transfer coups could of the be, season. I mean, sixteen million yes. for a guy who was captain at Stuttgart, captain, captain. for Japan. Mm. Very reliable midfielder Owen Hargreaves, of course, who played in the Bundesliga, who watches Bundesliga every week, says this is an absolute steal. They're, they've signed a proven, committed, dogged yeah. campaigner. Proven. 30 years old for a midfielder now in the current age of, you know, diet that, and training. Yeah, That's a peak. Yeah. That's an absolute peak. You could get another five years minimum. Yeah. I think they've pulled off an absolute transfer coup. Kudos, to, crossed, k- kudos to Klopp. Let us know what you think about yeah. that. Right, we had a reader's comment this week. Who yeah. Are, so, you know, we've been we've been talking about Saudi Arabia and their influence, the league influence on the transfer th- deals and... You no, know, Neymar just joined them for like a obscene number, obscene price, mm. and obscene wages. Have and you seen? He gets a whole kitchen of chefs yeah. and yes. uh, private plane, a private certain car. kind of juice he gets yeah. all the time. Whatever, and, whatever things he wants, it's everything. Uh, yeah. So you know, obviously, we've been a bit critical of Saudi's attempts to sports wash, um, but and but we also got a bit a bit of some criticisms from fans who, let, let's which see, is fine. We which, love which the feedback. Fine. Keep it coming, but. This this guy Zapper T- Titan said he he co- hypocrisy though. For years, European football was dominated by England and Spain with crazy wages. Suddenly, it's a problem with the Saudis. 
No, I, I don't think we are that concerned about the wages. I mean, Saudis can pay that much. All fair play to them. And, and if players want to join Saudi because they want to get a last payday, who are we to stop them? Mm, correct. But the thing is that why are they paying such high wages right now? Mm. It's not, they don't pay it like 10 years ago. They don't do it uh, uh, even five years ago. But right now, mm. it's because they got an image they wanted want to improve. Mm. After, you know, they've been talks about uh, the, them murdering the, the journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Correct. Um, after things of human rights um, uh, abuse there, uh, homosexuality is still uh, banned there. You know, and, and they want to be a superpower, but this, these are the things that, you know, not not getting through, not being being criticized for that. So they want, so this is the whole idea of forming that this Saudi league right now. And don't give me that, the, the BS about, you know, oh, we want to improve the standard of Saudi football. That's why we are bringing the players in. No, no, no. That is a facade, okay? Yep. It is about making them look like they are not, they are, they are making them washing away all the, 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 the dark undercurrents underneath. You know, Neymar is being offered 500,000 euros for each social media post he posts that says a positive thing about Saudi. Not about football, about Saudi about Arabia. About Saudi Arabia, not about the yeah. Saudi football. So there you go. They are paying people to, to make them look good. Couldn't agree more, my friend. Mm. Could not agree more. And look, the, the post is a valid one. Thank you, Zappa Titan, for sending it in. Yes, the hypocrisy. When it comes to Saudi Arabian wages, that part is hypocritical. Mm. He's absolutely correct. I remember being a kid in the 1980s when they Marco Van Basten and these guys were playing in Serie A. Yeah. And we used to say, you could buy a house with a week's wages that they were earning then, like 15,000, 20,000. The same applies today. For 600,000, you could buy a very nice HDB flat. <laughs> so a week's wages then, for them, could buy a house then and can now. So when you're factoring inflation, and yep. that hasn't changed that much. It was obscene then. And it's more obscene now. The difference is the end goal. And that's yeah. where you're absolutely correct. Serie A just wanted to be the best league. North America, when they did it, just wanted soccer to take off. When China did it, yes, they did want to improve their national image. But they also wanted the game to take off in their country. This isn't about sports. That's the difference. Yeah. This is about, as you said, a geopolitical exercise to improve Saudi Arabia's social standing yep. as they diversify their wealth away from fossil fuels because they know they're finite. finite. They're trying to make money elsewhere and then trying to improve their reputation yeah. elsewhere. They are using the world's most effective sports marketing tool to reshape a nation's reputation. Yep. That's the difference. And yeah, that's sports look, washing. You have to look beyond the wages. You yeah. have to look, you have to hear, see the context, the history behind what, what is happening in Saudi Arabia right now. Correct. Current history, current affairs. Do a bit of reading. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and that, is the, that is the context of this Saudi league. And that's what worries me. Last mm. point I'll make. That's what worries me because they're appealing to the Instagram generation, mm. hence the posts. But when you see the Instagram generation saying, oh, well, it's no different to China, or no, then you think, nope. geez, it's, it's working. It's all the, but it's yeah, actually it's, working. It's all superficial. It's, it? it's superficial mm. and it's working. But do always let us know what you think. Yeah. All right, positive. Women's World Cup. Spain eventually prevailed over England 1 0. What did you think? Deserve it, winners. Deserve it, winners. Yes. Absolutely deserve it. So, I, I mean, but I, I have I have also sympathies for 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 England a bit. I think they lo they they lost their captain, they lost their top striker, they top, lost their top playmaker early in the season through ACL injuries. Yes, and and you know right, they fought all the way. They, they may not play the prettiest football right now, but you know, being champions, European champions, they fought all the way into the final. Yes, and you know you 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 can you cannot fault them for their effort. No, uh, no, but but you can obviously you can see that. Spain were a class above when yep. they start to play, when their Tiki Taka formation yeah, starts beautiful. to play. That's you know, the, the, they were running rings around the the, the 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 players, the England players, so and, and you know, scored a goal and defended their life on it. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. After the World Cup final, I don't want to hear any more talk about the women's game being inferior. Oh, no. Because they have perfected the art of shithousery <laughs> just as well as the men. Whether it was elbows, elbows middle fingers, yeah. rolling around, fake tackles, <laughs> diving, getting stuck in. It's no different to the men's game now. 
But after all the the shenanigans, I think after that, there's a it's a nice touch. Everybody shook hands, hugged each other. You know, they had yeah, gone yeah. through a battle. But yeah, Roy, Roy Keane did like that. <laughs> Roy, he didn't like that at uh, all. Roy but Keane. it was great. But what we need to see now, serious point, is really quality. If you've got men's merchandise, you've got to have women's merchandise. You, you saw the story, the, the, the women's goalkeeper's jersey yeah. wasn't, available. wasn't available. And Nike made up some lame excuse. No, if it's available for the men, it must be available for the women. And that should be the last time that the World Cup final is played with all other leagues at the same time. You wouldn't do it for the men. If the men's World Cup final was on, yeah. no other elite football match would be played. Do it in the summer. And I actually know, because yeah. I know people who did this, I know people who didn't go to watch their matches in the EPL or the championship because they wanted to stay home and watch the, uh, the Women's oh. World Cup final. But it was great overall. Right, let's finish very briefly. Two positive stories involving Lionel Messi and me. The yeah. only time those two things will be put together. <laughs> Go on, do Messi. Okay, Messi, I mean, um, if you haven't heard, he, he just won his first trophy in US, won the League Cup brilliant, um, with his team, Inter Miami. Um, scored in every match he plays Fantastic. in. Six match, six, I think more than six goals though. Six match every goal. And in the, in the League Cup final against Nashville, scored the opener, blinding long range shot, curl right in the top, top corner. It's just like, and he's just like, I'm chilling, like, what? what? Mm. This is normal. <laughs> and, and it is normal. <laughs> he's made genius normal. Yeah. <laughs> and then, obviously, his team is still not that good yet. Consider goal, one one all, extra time. And then he went to penalties. It was like 10-9 or 11-9. It was like very, very tense. But he still won a title. He Brilliant. still won a title. Wonderful. Look. And, and, and he, that's after he rejected uh, Saudi, Saudi money. Yeah, Saudi fantastic. Money. Fantastic. 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 The question I get most when I visit schools in Singapore, it's become a thing now, Messi or Ronaldo. Oh. And, it, and it's from kids who weren't even born when they were at their peak, but it's just become this thing, Messi or Ronaldo. I always say Messi, and then I say, what do you say? If they say Ronaldo, I say to them, is there something <laughs> wrong with you? <laughs> Seriously, is there something wrong with you? Picking, no disrespect, well, it is disrespectful. Picking <laughs> Ronaldo over Messi... No. Is like no. having Michelangelo here and the guy who paints 100 HDB flats here. <laughs> oh my God. And picking the HDB flat guy because he paints faster than Michelangelo. They are completely different skill sets. What Michelangelo did was genius. What Messi does is genius. Ronaldo just does something you really well think, over and over and over again. If you still again. think this way after Messi won the World Cup, I, I have nothing to say. Don't know what I have nothing what else to say. I don't have nothing Messi else. has seen off his generation yeah. of Ronaldo and Kaka and all those guys. He's also seen off the next generation. He's seen off Neymar. And I would make a case he's virtually seen off the next generation, which is Mbappe. Because Mbappe, Mbappe hasn't yeah. lived up anywhere near the potential of Messi. Don't say it anymore. There's he's Messi the and there's everyone else. Everyone else, else. yeah. That's it. Speaking of there's only one. <laughs> that, well, Mr. Neil Humphreys has been uh, in some global marketing campaign by his, of his team, West Ham. Global. Rather. He appears one million second... <laughs> Just one millisecond, so many cuts. Like, but it's oh, such a memorable millisecond in the in the in the marking campaign for the third third jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened was West Ham got in touch with Western Core, who sell all the jerseys in Singapore, and they said, "Do you have a prominent hammer?" And they said, "We've only got one." We got in Singapore. <laughs> so I just had to hold up the jersey. And I wasn't paid, but I, as I said on social media, I just did it for that little boy <laughs> who couldn't afford the West Ham jersey yep. as a kid. So his one second My one of second of fame. So go to the West Ham Instagram page and you'll see me promoting Singapore and West Ham for a millisecond. One millisecond. I do let us know what you think. I do let us know what you think about Messi and Ronaldo. We know there's only one answer. Yeah, Chelsea, man, you send us, send us all, all your comments. your comments. Send them too. Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SEA. No, Yahoo SG, Yahoo <laughs> underscore NY on Twitter and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Brilliant. Thanks as always for all your comments. Do keep them coming. We do appreciate it. And see you again very soon for part two where we've got national 100 metre record holder, UK, UK Shum, Shum, right here. See you soon and take care. See you.